As I was reading them years ago, God was really showing me things. And I, I have heard a story now, and I, I cannot swear to you that it's absolutely true. But one of the stories I heard about George Washington and his inauguration was that they brought him a Bible. And instead of laying his hand, you know, just on top of the Bible, he had it opened to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 is a covenant that God makes with the nation. And he says to the nation, if you keep my laws, my statutes, my judgments, I'll bless you. I'll bless this. I'll bless that. I'll bless everything in your land. But then he says, also, if you break my covenant, then I'll curse this. I'll curse this. I'll curse that. I'll curse that. I'll curse that. And that's always, that's always stood out in my mind that I do believe America is a special nation. Um, and this has to do with it, that Washington didn't just put his hand on a Bible. He put it opened in a certain place where God and Israel are making a covenant with each other. God, we promise we'll do this if you'll bless us. And God said, I'll bless you. That'd be easy to do. And they had already, God had already blessed George Washington. That man was not the type of man to be able to beat the armies of King George, but he did. He made them surrender, hand over their sword and leave. And we won our nation. So now in, ver in chapter 29, I believe they're connected together. And here's what, here's what it says in verse 10. You stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God and your captains of your tribes and your elders and your officers with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp from the hewer of the wood and under the drawer of thy water that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. Now you think about what he's saying here. I'm making a covenant with this nation. Verse 13, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself and that he may be unto thee a God as he has said unto thee and as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath. And this is what got my attention. I'm not just making it with you here today. Verse 15, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. For ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. And ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Whew. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it came to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he blesseth himself in his heart, saying... I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but the, then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Now, God is making this personal. He's saying, if your neighbor lives right for me, I'll bless him. But if you don't, I'll burn you up while your neighbor stands there and watches. Because your neighbor did right, you didn't. Um, verse 21, and the Lord shall separate him unto 
evil out of all the tribes of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the in this book of the law so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say when they see the plagues of of uh, that land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that it is not sown, neither beareth, nor any grass groweth wherein, like the what? Overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboam. One, two, three, four. The fourth kingdom. This is the promise of the coming of the fourth kingdom. Which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worth. And I, I, listen, I can tell you, I studied enough of the Kabbalah and tried to make as much sense out of it as I could. But I've studied as much of the Kabbalah as, as, as I possibly could. And I'm telling you right now, they serve other gods. They don't serve the one true God. They don't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They won't even, they won't even pronounce his name. They won't, they won't even call him out by name. They serve multiple gods that they picked up and learned from Babylon, Samaria, Canaan, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, all the other strangers of the land that they passed through. They learned their gods and they serve them to this day. For they, verse 26, for they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not. And whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Which would you rather do? The words of the Lord or follow after other gods? Would you, Joe, would you rather be back in the Catholic church praying and bowing to idols and praying to all these statues of all these saints and shoot, no. Joe's got a God, one God. And one God is enough. To, to serve all your needs. But God said specifically that this land of His, He was going to turn it into like Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma and Zeboam. Those four cities, He's going to light them on fire for serving other God's and I believe God is going to do that. It is a future prophecy and it is going to happen. Whew. Boy, God, God can get angry, can he? Now turn to Deuteronomy 32. You won't get a free steak for, if you can read that. You'll just get a free DVD. All of them are free. Deuteronomy 32. Their rock. Moses is saying this and God's giving him the words. And he's saying their rock. And he's talking about their enemies. Is not as our capital R rock. Now hold, hold your place. Put that, put that little uh, thread there. In that chapter, 
and hold it there and turn to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. We're going to learn something. May, you may all know this already, but you're going to learn it again. 1 Corinthians 10. Moreover. Matthew, the next dog you get, you ought to name him Moreover. You know, in, like with Lazarus, Moreover, the dog came and licked his sores. Or Suswade. Suswade. You know, Roe versus Wade. <laughs> okay, I, I'll give some more of that Tuesday, don't worry. 1 Corinthians 10, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. We were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. In other words, they ate exactly what you and I are eating right now. The word of God. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank that spiritual rock. Capital, no it's capital R. That's the same capital R word rock. That's back in Deuteronomy 32. For that, that followed them, and that rock, there it is again, was Christ. And I believe that. I don't believe that that rock symbolized Christ, was a metaphor for Christ, was a, what is it, synonym, antonym, homonym, whatever it was. It was Christ there in the form, in the shape of a rock. Every place they went, there was a, they turned around and there was a rock there and they went. Wasn't that rock back at the last place we camped at? I don't know. If water comes out of it, then it is. And all of a sudden, shh, water starts coming out of it because God fed the Israelites every day with manna and he watered them every day with the rock, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that rock followed them everywhere they went. You had a, a rock somehow, somewhere. I don't know if it flew through the air. I don't know if it wiggled through the desert. I don't know if it like got rock legs and walked. I don't know if it rolled. I don't know. I just know that the next place the Israelites camped, when they turned around, there was the rock again, supplying them with water. That's what I know. Now back to Deuteronomy 32. You just flip that back. For their rock is not as our rock. Now, Let's think about this for a minute. You know what I bet their rock? I bet the water that comes from their rock tastes different. You get what I'm saying? The water is the word of God. And their rock is not as our rock. Their water tastes funny. Tastes doesn't taste right. And that's us when we hear a verse from some preacher. Somebody sent us a message to listen to. We start listening to the message and he didn't tell us what Bible. And all of a sudden he starts reading a Bible verse and we're going, that don't sound right. That don't sound like King James. And you open up to King James, find out, nope. The water from that rock is going to taste different. I guarantee you. It's not going to be sweet water. It's going to be bitter. How do I know this? Well, it said their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. And then it said in verse 32. For their vine is the vine of Sodom. And of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes. 
of gall, and their clusters are bitter. Now, we was at Walmart yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, Michaela helped Lisa pick out grapes. And she just reached in the bag and grabbed one. And Mima said, Michaela, are they good? Yeah. Are they sweet? Yeah, pretty good. Said, Michaela, if you do that again, we have to buy that. You know that, don't you? Oh, they're good enough. So she got a mouthful of grapes and we're checking out. We bought them, didn't we, darling? <laughs> no, the pickles we bought her are gone. She's a pickle eater. She can eat a whole jar of pickle while you can do the math of two plus two in your head. She can eat a jar of Vlasic pickles. Yeah. For their vine is a vine of Sodom and their fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine, that's their Bible, their words, their sermons, their advice. Their wine is the poison of dragons. The cruel venom of asps. Who remembers Boy George? Culture Club? I don't know what led me to look at him, but you know that costume he came out with when he did Karma Chameleon. And he's probably wearing 600 little pieces of different clothing in his hair, on, on, you know, just all over himself. And I noticed that he had, you remember the hat that he wore? Did you ever stop and notice that his hat had two holes in the front of it and it had a plastic serpent moving in and out of that hat? That's symbolic of something. What rules over him? Serpents. And then I, I ended up watching a, a YouTube, an old Phil Donahue show that featured Boy George. And he's talking up himself like he's a good role model for kids that he talks about love and that he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke. He doesn't do any of these bad things. He's a good role model for children. And of course, Phil Donahue, this liberal, he's talking him up. And the audience is going crazy. In 2009, George O'Dowd is his real name. They arrested him, tried him, and found him guilty of kidnapping his male escort holding him hostage for 19, how long was it? I don't know how many months he held him hostage and was beating him with this leather scourge because of his perversions. And he did a year and a half in one of the roughest jails in England. He's all fat and has is bald headed now and stuff like that and he's sitting in there crying because he's going I'm gonna get killed because I'm gay and I'm a celebrity he ain't such a role model now is he see that serpent told me a lot right there the wine is the poison of dragons and through music and this is what became evident. I'm watching this episode of Phil Donahue. And I am once again struck by how rock music says that it never, it never introduced any bad lifestyle to any child. It was just entertainment. That's a lie. Rock music, country music, pop music, rap music, 
rhythm and blues music, it all introduced a lifestyle to people. All of it. And this is, this is, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And he said, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. You see, wherever Sodom is, the vine of Sodom is going to be there. So let's say, let's say this church and I was a different sort of pastor and I knew that we had men in our church that were married to each other and I thought that was wonderful and I'd, I told the church how wonderful it was. They're committed to each other. They love one another and everybody in the church is going, oh, that is so great and that there's nothing wrong with that. They love each other and, and you know, the Bible's been misinterpreted all these years and what, what's wrong with us? We've been, we've been corrupted from the vine of Sodom. That's what's wrong. And God forbid that that ever happens. I'm going to say this. Do not, and I'm going to say this to all the people watching. Do not be surprised. Those of us who are 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. As we get older, the number of the people in our family underneath us that we find out are sodomites. Because they're everywhere. And the vine of Sodom and the wine of Sodom is being drank all over the country, in churches, radio stations, TV shows, in every place. And if this nation becomes drunk like Babylon, and we turn to Sodom, God has only but one choice to do. With this country. Burn it. Let's go to prayer. Father I've been across this land. I've been north. I've been south. I've been east. I've been west. I love this country. This, I love the beauty of this nation. I love the people of this country. God America has, has been great as a nation. But God, we are failing miserably. And sodomy and the vine of Sodom and the fruit of Sodom is everywhere. Those, gra those bitter grapes are everywhere enticing people drawing people, using them. God, have mercy. You're the only one who can turn this country around. And we ask you tonight, God, that though there be but just a handful of us, Father, it would just, it would bless my heart if you would turn this country around. I can't do it. But you can. So Father I love you. I trust you. I know God you know what you're doing. So Father help us as we follow your plan. And your will and your way. We love you and we thank you for being our God. In Jesus name. And all of God's people said. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.